This video will introduce and instruct the viewer on the proper procedure for starting up and commissioning an Armstrong design envelope pump with sensorless control. From here on, we will refer to these as DE pumps. To facilitate this procedure, in this video, we will use a demonstration unit equipped with an Armstrong Model 4302 DE pump. Armstrong DE pumps with sensorless control utilize pre-programmed control curves that define the unit's operation and calculate actual flow and head values, eliminating the need for a system feedback sensor. When a DE pump is ordered with sensorless control, Armstrong enters the design flow, head, and minimum system pressure into the controller during the manufacturing and testing process. Since many HVAC systems don't always perform as designed, a proper startup and commissioning process is required for the DE pump to work as intended and to comply with ASHRAE 90.1 energy savings requirements. Using these few tools, we'll commission the DE pump in five distinct steps. Before starting, make sure you have all information pertaining to the pump available. This includes the order annex, the factory pump curve as it was ordered, and the installation and operations manual. If the information required is not available, refer to the pump nameplate for some of the required information. An IVS commissioning and startup check sheet should be completed for each pump that is being commissioned. Verify with the site that water and power are available and ready to supply the pump and that system valves downstream can be fully opened to simulate a full load. Also, verify that pumps can be run without any damage to the system. If applicable, verify with site personnel that the BAS contractor will be on site for coordination. Observe all applicable safety regulations and practices. Check the pump installation for proper mounting. Check the supply voltage to the pump controller and record it. Voltage should be no more than plus or minus 10% of rated voltage. Check if the pump is to be controlled remotely by a building automation system. If yes, ensure that the BAS enable contact is wired across terminals 12 and 18 on the controller. If no, ensure that the factory jumper is wired across terminals 12 and 18 on the controller. For pumps with a filter or separator in the flush line, ensure the isolation valve is fully open. Open up and bleed the pump seal flush line to verify that no air is locked inside the seal or seal lines. After bleeding, close the valve. For horizontal pumps, check the alignment. Check to make sure the piping system valves are opened to 100% to simulate a full design load. The unit is now safe to turn power on. Verify that the controller has completed its proper boot up sequence. Verify that the controller is in the off mode. Check parameters 20-69.0 through 20-69.9 to verify that the sensorless data is programmed. Put the pump in hand mode and run it at 15 Hz. Now, looking from the top of the motor down, verify the motor rotation per the sticker on the motor. Open up and bleed the pump seal flush line again to verify that no air is locked inside the seal or seal lines. After bleeding, close the valve. The sensorless readouts can be verified by comparing the pressure readings on the suction and discharge gauges at duty speed. The deadhead pressure on the gauges at duty speed should match the one shown on the specific pump duty curve. Change parameter 0-20 to option 1850. Change parameter 0-22 to option 1654. Close the discharge valve at the immediate outlet of the pump to deadhead the pump. With the pump in hand mode, increase the speed of the pump to the design speed per the duty curve in your startup package. This data can be found on the order annex or on the pump nameplate. Record the readout from the suction and discharge gauges, including units. Verify that the pump differential pressure when deadheaded is the same as shown on the duty curve. 
record the controller's sensorless pressure readout, including units. Verify that the controller's sensorless pressure readout is within 5% of the gauge readout. In order for the system to perform as originally designed, the settings on the DE pump need to be adjusted to match actual system conditions. Open the discharge valve and set the pump to the design duty speed and record the actual system flow and head readouts, including units. Verify the required flow with the customer or site personnel against the new actual flow and head pressure. Ramp the pump up or down to achieve requested flow and record the controller's sensorless flow and pressure. This will become the new set point. Record these values. Set parameter 20-21 to the sensorless pressure readout taken in the previous step. This will be your pressure set point for a fully open system. Set parameter 22-89 to the sensorless flow readout taken in the previous step. This will be your flow set point for a fully open system. Set parameter 22-87 to minimum control head pressure if known, or set to the recommended Armstrong default of 40% of design head pressure set point shown in parameter 20-21. Change parameter 0-20 back to the default value. Change parameter 0-22 back to the default value. You have now readjusted the quadratic control curve to actual site conditions. The pump should be tested in auto mode to verify it follows the quadratic control curve programmed. The controller is set to optimal PID values for most applications. If a faster or slower reaction to system changes is required, adjust the PID settings. Put the IVS controller in auto mode. Close the discharge valve downstream of the pump and verify the pump slows down with this introduced flow restriction. Record the sensorless pressure readout with the valve fully closed. It should be close to the no-flow pressure set point on parameter 22-87. Open the discharge valve to 100%. The pump should ramp up or down to achieve design flow and head. Verify the PID proportional gain parameter 20-93. The default value should be 0 0.05. Verify the PID integral time parameter 20-94. The default value should be 0 0.10 seconds. If a faster reaction to system changes is required, increase 20-93 or decrease 20-94 at a very small rate. If a slower reaction to system changes is required, decrease 20-93 or increase 20-94 at a very small rate. Note that the pump will take a few minutes to adjust to new PID values. All Armstrong DE pumps can be interfaced to a building automation system for monitoring or control. Standard supported protocols built into the controller are Modbus MSTP, Metasys, FLN, and BACnet MSTP. Check parameter 8-30 and change it according to the BAS protocol required. Check parameter 8-31 and change to the specific equipment address provided by the BAS contractor. Check parameters 8-32 and 8-33 and change to the required baud rate and parity stop bits in accordance to the BAS contractor instructions. Change parameter 8-02 to FC port. Change parameter 8-30 to BACnet. 
change parameter 8-31 to the MAC address provided by the BAS contractor. Change parameter 8-32 to the proper baud rate of the network provided by the BAS contractor. Change parameter 8-70 to the unique device instance number for each drive provided by the BAS contractor. Change parameter 8-73 to 10 or higher. The commissioning is now completed.